Hi everyone, welcome to my wormery. I'm down here preparing to feed one of my bins. It's a bin that I haven't checked in on now for 10 days. It's a system that's got red wigglers in it. They're the red wigglers that I originally started out with way in the very beginning. And believe it or not, all the red wigglers that I started out with haven't grown into a big massive um, dozen or so bins. Actually, you know, if what had happened hadn't happened, that's probably where I would be now. My Original worm population was spread out over many bins, but about a year ago I started encountering problems and then um, I started having all kinds of die-offs. Long story short, I was left with a very minuscule population that can really be tracked back to my original worms. And what I was able to do was nurse that small population back to something somewhat respectable. And they live in this bin right here. So it's um, it's been... An interesting journey but it's definitely behaving looking like seeming like a you know everyday worm bin working well and I've got some information about it here it's a um, 135 day old bin just from general perspective and it's been 10 days since the last time we fed it at that time it was receiving its 12th feeding and today if we feed and I probably will um, it'll receive its 13th the last time we fed, there was just this kind of unusual uh, pattern to the types of things they got last time. I don't know if you can see it. <laughs> I feel like I'm hosting an episode of Sesame Street over here. Yeah, there's just this kind of odd pattern of everything that they got last time uh, all started with the letter C. Coffee, crushed eggshell, cucumber, even some cubes of frozen berry juice that I had. And then I might be stretching it here, but I did also include a bunch of um, collected bedding that I found along the way. Because it is a, a bin old enough that I would want to probably hold off on putting fresh bedding in. So I really tried to lean on the existing materials in the bin to collect up any sort of stuff that I could use as bedding in the feeding. And in that same vein of um, thought, the last letter C is the, the covering paper that was on top of the material in the bin. was so tattered, so soaked so prone to um, tearing that it too became just bedding within the feeding. So next week when we get together the letter will be D so we need to feed everything today will be all stuff beginning with the letter D. No I'm just kidding. So um, yeah I'm gonna get a glove on we're gonna get that uh, system over here up onto the bench so we can see how things are coming along possibly out of feeding but let's see how it looks first before we bring anything down from the kitchen. So the one thing we didn't see on the list of foods that they got last time was apple no letter A, just all letter C. <laughs> but apple was uh, the main feeding that the bin had gotten two times prior. So not last time, but two times ago as well as three times ago. So the previous feeding being 10 days ago. And the feeding prior to that being 14 days prior to that. Um, there was apple put in here. And apple's kind of a slow going food in most worm bins. And in my case it's exactly that it's a slow composting food in most cases and the apple peels that were in here um, were sort of sticking around we kept seeing leftovers of them so I don't know if we're gonna still see some of that but I usually don't react to leftovers as meaning that the worms aren't hungry or didn't want it I think I treat it more as they just haven't really been able to um, make use of it yet because its rate of decomposition is maybe a little bit slower and it just hasn't gotten there yet, you know. So that's um, that's why I'll a lot of times encounter leftovers from previous feedings and then feed anyway. Because all that stuff that's had a chance in the worm bin to start really breaking down is the stuff that the worms will be able to, you know, feed on in a fairly short period of time. And all that new stuff I'm adding is sort of, um, you know, the backup or the next wave. A lot of times in worm systems that are this age, I begin to, um, I begin to let the material hang on to its own moisture as opposed to trying to help it as I do here, like with that piece of plastic that covered things here, as you saw in the beginning. And here, I'm, I'm almost wondering if we might um, benefit from switching over to something a little more breathable and giving this material a chance to kick off some of this moisture 
the worms definitely like a nice moist bin and the material is you know obviously benefiting from it too because they're able to break it all down so I'm kind of not sure you know do I want to help this stuff dry off and retain balance I don't know I've always kind of got this weird gut feeling on moisture when it's time to spray down a system I I get into it but then I maybe don't apply quite as much as I should have or could have um, and then I forced that and then I kind of forced myself to just do it you know it's like hey you came here to moisten the bin you got the water bottle in your hand <laughs> just give them the water already stop trying to think about it and make a judgment on it um, just assume that they do need it regardless of you know what you're sensing or thinking but don't assume that what seems to be maybe a little bit too damp for your liking is not um, overly damp for the the worms but here I definitely would not add moisture in fact I would almost probably want to lean towards giving them a, a food source that doesn't kick off a whole lot of moisture so I'm, I'm nervous about removing the plastic coverings now that we're in winter and that the heat's running pretty regularly in the house all my systems seem to be drying out um, wherever there's exposure to the air so sometimes those plastic coverings maybe don't cover quite as well as they do here or maybe the system's just not consisting so heavily of castings yet so it's material that doesn't have that capability of hanging on to its moisture the way castings do and I observe a lot of drying this time of year in my systems so you know I think we're just gonna hold the line with you know moisture strategy but definitely acknowledge the fact that maybe there's a little bit more in here than is needed maybe um, calibrate the feeding selection with stuff that might not contribute to what might already be a somewhat overly damp system I don't know what I've really got you know I mean I'll, I'll, I'll give them what I've got and you know if I'm able to um, satisfy that consideration then that's great but I'm not also not going to go crazy thinking about it the worms will end up thanking me if they end up getting another soggy meal <laughs> they don't they don't mind so here again I find myself creating this massive opening that might not really be necessary <laughs> I guess I was really curious about all those contents of the last feeding all of that top cover covering newspaper that had been on the system for so long went in there as like um, stuff that was resting right beneath the ice cubes of berry juice there was all that cucumber and I think the cucumber also ended up getting placed right on top of um, a lot of collected bedding bits that we picked up from throughout the bin to use as the foundation for that feeding and it doesn't seem like there's a whole lot of any of that anywhere I think we did bump into some sort of a clearly evident piece of leftover which I, I was struggling to remember what it was that's the reason I didn't really zero in on it but um but it's definitely like a mushy white substance I'm not a big fan of things that are a big mass of the same stuff unless it's also loaded with worms crawling throughout it but if it's just a a mass of some sort of stuff that the worms are not inhabiting to me it seems like that stuff if possible should be spread out and broken up and um, made such that you know not just its outer surface is accessible um, and subject to breakdown but you know the entire mass of the material throughout benefits from being in the bin not just its outer surface I bet you this is some apple peel a little bit of leftover from feedings gone by so yeah I think we're um, I think we're in good shape in terms of giving these guys a pretty generous feeding um, at day 135 I'm holding off on putting any more fresh bedding in here they're gonna get food only and that's that so that's kind of the way I tune my um, feedings for older bins bins that are now um, like this one here 135 days of age you know this being its 13th feeding it could be near its end you know come could come to the point soon where we decide hey why don't we just let the system start steering its um, way towards harvest but um let me head up to the kitchen get these little guys a little something to eat and we'll continue when I get back the assortment of stuff that I've got for them is fairly routine there's banana peels in here there's a coffee 
and you know I'm looking at this filter and I keep thinking you know maybe do, do I give this bin a waiver and just give them a little bit more slow composting bedding type carbon rich materials in the form of that filter um, I, I guess what I'm really looking at it are those two old filters that were covering the top right when we opened it up and removed the plastic there were two coffee filters I was almost thinking that perhaps you know we'll give a little bit more leeway on this bin yet again at <laughs> day 135 and I'm going to just bring in this really heavily worked paper these coffee filters which I think um, will provide us just enough gentle insulation between the frozen foods that we're dumping in and the um, the few worms that could possibly still be squirming within the material right below so this way I just feel uh, you know I'm not giving these poor little guys a, a wicked shock by dumping in a whole pile of frozen stuff perhaps even a little bit of this coffee going in first which is not frozen could also cushion any inhabitants of the bin that are caught up down below here um, from being frozen <laughs> I don't know I don't know why but I've just suddenly made that into a priority I never used to it always used to be like well whatever here's your food <laughs> if it's frozen and you bump up against it well then don't bump up against it you know um, for some reason I guess maybe because it was just the Christmas season recently I, I think all those commercials that you see on TV were showing that kid with his tongue stuck to the lamp post um, just make me think twice about <laughs> putting frozen stuff in proximity of my worms so really nothing terribly out of the ordinary with this feeding it's pretty routine in my bins to try to really limit the amount of bedding that goes into uh, a system at, at a certain point because it does take a little longer to break down and I do want to see all that stuff at, um, at a completely broken down stage at some point in the near future when it's time to really uh, consider this as a, a completed batch of castings and it's time to get the worms working elsewhere on a new batch so let's um I guess we'll treat that little sprinkling of coffee as the foundation for the last of the frozen foods to be dropped in here I don't think the whole layering of stuff really makes much of a difference Except with the coffee, I don't know why, but to me it seems like the coffee um, is one of those materials that just ends up sort of becoming like a mound of material that the worms can't really infiltrate the inside of. All they could really do is nibble on the outer surface of it, so I don't like the idea of having coffee go in as a, a big mound or a pile. Lately I've been trying to spread it around, um, and I can't tell really <laughs> whether it's helping or not, but... Uh, I do feel like I'm maybe seeing fewer coffee leftovers because in the past I would always be able to see that distinct slightly different color material um, in the area where you had most recently fed and you knew it was still leftovers of coffee so I don't know maybe it's helping maybe it's just a waste of time <laughs> but we're um, pretty much at the end of this feeding session or at least taking care of applying today's feeding the only other thing that I've been doing a lot in my bins lately is just sort of making a quick confirmation of how things look in the outskirts of the bins. So before we go, why don't we just do that here too. This is just the area in the bin that's furthest from where I typically feed, which is down the middle. And the material is so nice out here. It's so nice and crumbly and loose and it's far less um, littered with little bits of leftover scraps of bedding and food it just seems like it's more castings rich material out here and the moisture level is pretty much perfect too so any uh, any little lingering bits of stuff that's left over out there will probably receive the attention that it needs and get broken down so I'm not worried I don't think there's anything I need to do to help matters over there lately I have been noticing though this is the side of the container that's got the label on it as you can see over here it's the uh, the side of the bin that faces inwards into the room so this other side of the bin over here where we're gonna check last before we close up is the side that's up against the wall and here 
perhaps just because of the one or two degrees difference maybe we'll see a difference I don't know because in one of my bins it felt like I um, saw significantly fewer worms on the side of the bin where things were possibly a degree or two colder due to it being next to the wall down here in my drafty unheated basement and I think you'd probably have to say that yeah we're probably seeing just that here too I mean yeah we're definitely encountering a worm or two right so they're in they're in here they're not repelled by it or um, disliking it per se but um, they're obviously favoring uh, what appears to be either the warmer side of the bin or who knows maybe there's some other um, factor in play here that I'm not tuning in on so it's very unscientific but just an observation I guess all right well what else do we need to do here a lot of times I um do have a covering and I usually try to at least have one covering that shows me where I last fed it's pretty routine in my systems to pretty much always feed down the middle but that's not really cast in stone either I do actually have another system where I'm experimenting with different feeding patterns and um, just doing it for fun I believe not so much as an experiment but here this piece of um, fresh paper goes across the middle indicating where we last fed so that when we come back in here next time we don't have any trouble finding it <laughs> all right everyone all we got left here to do is um, get things covered up and put away so before I go let me just really quickly say thank you thanks so much for watching I hope you enjoyed the video if you did as always please don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up before you leave um, that's always very much appreciated and if you haven't done so already please also consider subscribing to the channel too that's really appreciated as well all right everyone thanks again for watching take care